Today we're going to take a look at other corresponding segments of similar polygons. And these corresponding segments include sides, altitudes, medians, mid-segments, and so on. And so given similar polygons, the ratio of any of these two corresponding segments of the polygon is equal to the similarity ratio or scale factor of your similar polygons. So looking at example one, it says the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of two similar tri uh, triangles is 5 over 2. What is the ratio of the medians? So the ratio of the medians is also going to be 5 over 2, but I want to draw a picture just to review the vocab. So here's two similar triangles with the ratio of the sides, 5 to 2. The median, remember, goes from the midpoint of one side. So if I look at the midpoint of this side, the median goes from the vertex that's opposite to that midpoint. So midpoint, opposite vertex. So that median is also going to be in the same ratio of 5 to 2. Number two, in the diagram it says triangle TPR is similar to triangle XPZ. Find the length of altitude PS. So the ratio of the altitudes, I'm going to call the length PSX. So the ratio of the altitudes of the two triangles would be X to 20. That ratio is equal to the ratio of your side lengths. So 6 plus 6, we have a side length of two, uh, 12, rather. And then 8 plus 8, we have a side length of 16. So that ratio is equal to 12 to 16. Solving the proportion by doing cross products, we end up with 16 times x, 16x equal to 240. Divide by 16, and x is 15. Therefore, the length PS, or altitude PS, is equal to 15. Now this next piece. We're going to use our similar triangles now to prove a proportion. I want you to recall that if two polygons are similar, corresponding sides are proportional. So the first thing we do is we prove the polygons to be similar, and then we can prove their proportion. So if we take a look at this proof right here, so given AP perpendicular to PQ, we have a right angle here, and PQ perpendicular to CQ, we have a right angle here, and it also says that AB is perpendicular to PC. So within the two triangles, we already have this angle congruent to this angle, because all right angles are congruent, okay? And then because um, PQ is perpendicular to both AP and CQ. These two segments are parallel. And given two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we now have this angle congruent to that angle. So within the two triangles, the triangles are similar by angle angle. And once we know the triangles are similar, we then follow with step number two, we can prove the proportion to be true, okay? So the proportion here is comparing leg to hypotenuse. So BP to AP, let's grab the blue. So leg to hypotenuse is equal to leg to hypotenuse, QC to PC. I'll put two dots here for the corresponding sides. So once we have the d triangles to be similar, we can then prove the proportion. Notice there's no lengths there or measurements. We're just proving this proportion, okay, these ratios to be equal. And that's because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So let's take a look at the first proof. This proof is partially filled in, and I have it filled in up to the point of the two triangles being similar. Okay, so given the triangle ABC, it says angle ACB is a right angle. That's already marked, this right angle here. And um, 
CD is perpendicular to AB. Now, CD perpendicular to AB, I have both right angles here. So, in proving the proportion, what makes it easier is if you highlight the sides in your proportion. So, if we highlight side AB, that's the larger, AB to BC, the larger hypotenuse to our leg in the larger triangle. So, those two segment lengths go with the larger. And then BC to BD, if you connect, BD, BC, that's this triangle right here. So we want to prove the green and the orange triangles to be similar. So using the givens, step number two, angle CDB. So looking at this angle based on this given right here, I didn't need to look at the other right angle because that's not one of the angles in the triangles that I'm trying to prove similar. So angle CDB is a right angle. Now these two angles, CDB and ACB, those two angles are congruent because all right angles are congruent. And then the two triangles are overlapping, so they have this angle in common. So angle B is congruent to angle B by reflexive. Now just like with congruency, your similarity statement needs to be written in order of congruent angles. So if I say triangle, okay, let's look at the larger triangle, I'll go in order A, B, C, that would be similar to triangle, okay, we know angle B is congruent to angle B, so B is in the middle, and then D right here is congruent to C in the other one. So that leaves us with C, B, D, okay. And then this proportion is now proven to be true. A, B, B, C is equal to length B, C to length B, D. And that is because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. I'm going to use the um, symbol for similar, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So to prove a proportion, you first prove the triangles to be similar. Okay, that's step number one. And then this reason here, step number two, the proportion itself is always going to be true because your corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. And then the last type of proof we're going to do for the unit is proving the cross products involved uh, involving your line segments are equal. So just to go back to what we did, if two polygons are similar, step number one, you now know that corresponding sides are proportional. And then given any proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So C times B is equal to A times D. So to prove, this is the same proof we had in that first page, okay? So we went through why the triangles were similar. We had this right angle congruent to that right angle, and because PQ was perpendicular to both AP and CQ, two parallel lines, or they were parallel, and then two brown lines cut by transversal alternate interior angles are congruent. So given the two triangles similar, we know the proportion to be true, and then if I take a look at the cross product, BP times PC, that product is equal to this cross product, AP times QC, and we have to write this reason. So in a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So let's look at number four. So in number four, it's given that DE is parallel to AB, so DE is parallel to AB, and EF is parallel to, so EF right here, is parallel to AC. So I'm going to grab a color and I'm going to highlight this, uh, the segments or the sides of the triangle. So DG is right here. Now keep in mind that this cross product 
might be easier to write the proportion that went with it. So I like to put, so make your two fraction, fraction equal to fraction. I like to put that first factor of the product up top, and it's a cross product, so GF would go here. So DG times GF equals EG times GC. Okay, so that side corresponds to, now EG is in another triangle, so I'll use a different color. And then G, uh, GC right here, so this is one triangle and connecting the endpoints of those two segments. And then the other side, GF, the last segment, so I'm going with these two triangles. So given that these two segments are parallel, we have an alternate interior angle um, GCD. So this angle here, because we're using this transversal. So that's congruent to alternate interior GFE, which is written here. And then the other alternate interior is GDC, one, two, using this transversal now, GE. F. Now you could have used vertical angles, okay, but I just chose to use both pairs of the alternate interior angles. And remember how we write that reason, okay, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So now I have the two triangles similar by AA. Before we can prove the cross product, we need the proportion. So we just copy that down right here, DG to EG equals GC to GF, okay? So we just, before that, we talked about, or we had proven the two triangles similar. So in these DG, EG, and GC, GF, those are all corresponding sides. So corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional, as we just wrote a proportion. And then to finish, we can now write our statement for the proof, because we have our cross product, DG times GF equals EG times GC. And the reason would be, in a proportion, referring to what we just did above, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Okay. Then we're going to finish with five, a circle proof. I thought we'd go back to look at um, the circle proofs as we didn't do too many within that unit. And it did come from a New York State Regents, as I could tell from the font. So part of this is filled in. So I'm going to leave this down before I scroll up. And actually, let me zoom out to 100%. Now I can fit it all on there. Okay. It says, in the diagram of circle O, remember circle's name based on its center, we have diameter RS, chord AS, tangent TS, and secant TAR. Notice they had the headings, statements, and reasons. All of the givens are written, okay, and they're numbered, just as you should do if that wasn't provided. Complete the following proof to show that RS squared equals RA times RT. And that RS squared written as a proportion is down here in number eight. So there's that cross product. Okay. Given that RS, so statement number two, RS is perpendicular to TS. So let's locate that. RS is our diameter, is perpendicular to TS right here. Okay. TS, it mentioned, was a tangent, and okay, we have diameter RS. Back in the circles unit, a diameter or a radius, since a radius is a part of a diameter, is always perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency. So a diameter 
of a circle is perpendicular to a tangent line at the point of tangency. So they were looking for that theorem from that unit. So therefore, RST is a right angle. Perpendicular lines form right angles. That's fine. Now, number four, angle RAS is a right angle. So let's highlight RAS. Well, RAS has endpoints here and here. The vertex is on the circle, so that's going to be half of the arc that it intercepts. So if this is 180, this is also going to be a right angle because half of 180 is 90 degrees. And so that reason would be an inscribed angle in a semicircle because it's in the other half of the circle is a right angle. And then RST is congruent to RAS right here because all right angles are congruent. Using the symbol. So the two triangles we have, so if we highlight those in blue, or if you go back to your statement, your proportion down here, RS and RA, so RS and RA go with this right triangle right here. And then the other one, RT and RS, RT and RS, Okay, this right triangle, these are overlapping right here at R. So that's why angle R is congruent to angle R by reflexive property. The two triangles are congruent by angle angle. Or not congruent rather, but similar. And then we have the proportion followed by the cross product. So because the triangles are similar, we have a proportion because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. And to finish, in a proportion, okay, here's our cross product. RS times RS is RS squared equals RA times RT. So in a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes.